Hi there, Brendan Keefe here at the 11 Alive studios in uh, Atlanta. The reason I'm talking to you tonight is we have a special report coming up at 11 o'clock tonight. It's also available right now on 11alive.com in the description of this Facebook Live and YouTube Live. You can see um, exactly how to get to the page and sort of get some background, but I'm also here to answer your questions. Uh, what we're talking about is this. Let me show you first uh, some of what we're talking about. This is the story of a man named Daniel Huertas, and we go back to the home he fled at the age of 15. He's now 43. His foster mother was sexually abusing him. She later pleaded guilty to sexually abusing foster boys in her home. Although now she denies it, she told the court, yes, that's what I did. He says he was sexually abused there in the foster home. And he now wants to sue the Department of Family and Children's Services in Georgia because he says they sent him back into the home uh, after he had uh, told them that she was sexually abusing him. Uh, and he said that this woman, Sherry, uh, Sherry Jo Wilkes, uh, specifically requested that boys be placed with her. That's what was in the arrest uh, affidavit uh, or the uh, search warrant affidavit that was filed by the police department. Uh, just really a fascinating uh, and also disturbing story uh, as this man tries to get justice uh, these many, many years later, and Georgia law prevents him from doing that. Um, so let me uh, actually get into the Facebook Live here. Uh, I'm going to actually start to answer your questions if you have any questions uh, about this story. And we're also going to give you a little preview of what you can see right now on 11alive.com. Again, it's in the description, the uh, link. Uh, and then also you can see the, um, oh, getting a little feedback here. Um, uh, Brenda Sue Humes Hunt say hello, says hello. Hi there. Good to see you. Uh, we're going to now, let me give you just a preview of the story. Um, this is one of the great benefits of following 11alive.com on Facebook and also on YouTube and also my Brendan Keefe 11 Alive page is that we're actually going to give you a preview of the whole long reveal version of the story. Uh, if you're wondering what the reveal is, by the way, uh, that is the show we run every uh, Sunday at 6 p.m. And this is the long form version of the story uh, that I'm about to show you here so you can get a sort of sneak peek uh, at the story. So here we go. I think it's the next road on the right. Daniel Huertas. Wow. I can't believe I remember how to get here. Is heading back. That's the house right there. Back home. Yeah, that's the house. And back to the night in the 1990s when he ran away. Because these are the woods right here where I had to hide. The state put you in that home. And the state returned me to that home. They put you in the hands of your abuser, quite literally. Yeah, and I, I've, I've told him that. I said, you know, you guys put me on a collision course with somebody that was going to alter my life forever. The Cherokee County Department of Family and Children's Services sent 15-year-old Daniel and other boys to live with Sherry Jo Wilkes. Court records show the foster mother specifically requested that boys be placed with her and defects obliged because it was difficult to find homes that would accept teenage boys. You lost your virginity to your foster mother. Yeah, she would um, watch porno pornographic videos and she would point out you know saying what she what she like me to try on her and then we would do that she plied you with alcohol and drugs in order to take advantage of you yes every night every night um every night every single night for how long so, uh, the whole time i was there after eight months daniel built up the courage to tell his defax caseworker that his foster mom was sexually abusing him and you thought, here comes the cavalry. Right, I thought Is that, that what happened? No, that's not what happened. The fact is, I'd never seen the caseworker again that day. They sent me back to the foster home. They sent you back after you said you were being abused? Yeah. I had a hard time wrestling with the fact that they just left me. Daniel ran away, hitchhiking all the way to Philadelphia, where Pennsylvania Child Protective Services finally listened. I had run away. and and hitchhiked over 500 miles to have another state force Georgia to investigate something that wow. should have been investigated long before I got there. 
Sherry Jo Wilkes went to the district attorney's office in Cherokee County and claimed Daniel raped her. But sheriff's detectives discovered other victims in the home, foster boys who insisted they were also sexually abused. One boy claimed the foster mom kept him silent with a gun. If I told anybody, she'd blow my brains out, and I was terrified. The sheriff's office got a search warrant, finding the handgun, vodka, and porn videos precisely as the boys had described. Sherry Jo Wilkes pleaded guilty to felony child molestation and related charges in 1993. In return for that plea, she was given 10 years probation, not prison, ordered to pay $100 in restitution, and the judge allowed her to continue babysitting and fostering children once that probation was over. When you were abused by your foster mother, the justice system stopped at the foster mother, gave her right. probation, and didn't go after the system to see who Correct. may have known and who may have facilitated that abuse. Right. Now, if had I have known what I know now, I would have pushed the issue as hard as I possibly could have. Daniel wants to sue the Department of Family and Children's Services for perpetuating the abuse, but he can't. While Georgia briefly allowed adults to sue individuals who abused them decades earlier as children, it's one of only two states in the nation that prevented victims from suing entities like DFACS under that extended statute of limitations. A push tonight to make it easier for victims of sexual abuse to hold their abusers and the organizations they worked with accountable in court. Five bills have been filed in the last two sessions of the General Assembly, allowing victims as old as 55 to sue their child abusers as well as agencies and organizations the Boy Scouts of America have paid a half dozen lobbyists to work the state capitol not one of those bipartisan bills has become law it's much easier for you to sue your abuser now than it is the system that allowed this to happen correct nothing no amount of money they could ever offer me would would fix what what's been broken Daniel has battled addiction and homelessness now he's fighting for his daughter his 14-year-old girl was placed in foster care by Cherokee County DFAX. Your daughter is in the same system that destroyed your life. Correct. You believe there are good foster parents out there, right? I believe there is, and I believe that there is children out there that, that do need to be taken from their homes, and I believe that there's children out there that are legitimately being abused. Brennan Keith back now live with you uh, here on Facebook uh, and on YouTube Live as well. I know this is very disturbing. Uh, quickly, I want to tell you, because we just showed you the whole story, and for those people just joining us, the foster mother now denies that she uh, sexually abused him. In fact, she is maintaining, as she did to authorities back then, some 27 years ago, that actually she was raped by Daniel Huertas. But then um, DFAX and the investigators there in the sheriff's office actually found two other boys who said uh, that they also were sexually abused. The foster mother's claiming now that two of those boys have recanted and that she uh, basically took a plea uh, from the uh, district attorney because they offered probation and she didn't want to risk it going to trial. Uh, she also never reported the rape, though, until they took the children away. DFAX, meanwhile, we asked them, do you want to apologize to Daniel Huertas? And uh, they said they couldn't even acknowledge he was in the foster care system because of confidentiality rules and laws. And then we also asked, have you improved the system? And if so, what are the improvements? And they, they actually wouldn't detail what the improvements were. They just said it's improved a lot since the 1990s. The problem with uh, these things is that the confidentiality exists until the child dies, basically. If a child dies, then they, and especially in defects care, then and only then can they make the file public. They're exempt from all of these open records requests, and we simply can't see into this opaque system. We receive half a dozen complaints uh, every week here at 11 Alive with the Reveal investigative team um, because, and it's very hard for us to do those stories because it's very often to see who's on the side of the angels. It's only this many years later that we could look this deeply into a case like that. Um, but again, she did just get probation. There is that bill pending right now, uh, HB 911. Uh, it's a House bill. It's pending right now that the governor has actually endorsed here in Georgia that would criminalize uh, going forward 
uh, any sexual contact between a foster parent and a foster child, regardless of consent and regardless of age up to 21. So even a 20-year-old foster child and a foster parent having a sexual relationship, that would be criminal, and there would be a minimum sentencing of five years, 25 years if the child's under 14, uh, minimum prison term. I want to get to some of your questions. Uh, let's see, a number of people you were asking really good questions. Um, this is horrible. The agency should be held accountable. This is why we're doing this now. And if you're wondering why we're looking at a 27-year-old case, again, it's only now uh, that we can start to see, you know, what was really going on uh, inside the Cherokee County Department of Family and Children's Services and also within the State Department of Family and Children's Services. You know, there's a graphic right there. This was, and I'm sorry, it's very graphic, literally, uh, the VHS tapes. Uh, those were the, what they found with the search warrant. They also found she specifically requested that boys be placed with her and that DFACS uh, obliged because they were, it was so hard to place teenage boys. Now, the foster mom insists to us that she requested and her husband at the time had requested only babies and that they were told they'd be blacklisted uh, and blackballed by the agency if they didn't agree to accept teen boys. But this was in a sworn affidavit from the detective uh, and it was quoting DFACS personnel at the time that she specifically requested uh, teenage boys for uh, foster care in her foster home. Uh, so what can we do, Darcy Cobb asked. That's a really good question. I mean, you know, we never really advocate for one outcome or another, but if you're really concerned, call your state lawmakers, uh, call your state senator, call your state uh, representative, because there are pending bills right now uh, in the legislature, in the General Assembly, that would fix this going back in time, and it would also fix it going forward in terms of criminalizing uh, this kind of contact uh, and whether, you know, people agree, uh, you know, if there should be mandatory minimum prison sentences. Uh, this story is all part of the uh, reveal, uh, which is our show that we have on Sundays at 6. Um, we are the only weekly local investigative show in the country. And this is the kind of work we do. Uh, Margaret Lyons asks, why is she not in prison? Uh, that's a really good question. You know, in the story, uh, we showed that um, you basically had uh, the district attorney offering, the, you know, the district attorney didn't just negotiate this. The, the opening offer from the district attorney was 10 years probation. Um, $100 uh, restitution was ordered by the judge, which is hard to fathom if there's any restitution, why only $100? Um, and then she was allowed to babysit and, and continue fostering children after that probation was over. Um, unfortunately, now many of the characters in this story are dead. The, the, there's a boy who corroborated the story that, that Daniel Huertas raped the foster mother. He's dead. Uh, but then the other boys said, two of the other boys said that that boy was also having a sexual relationship with the foster mom. There was a woman sleeping in the same bed as the foster mom according to her, when she claimed she was raped by Daniel Huertas. Um, and investigators did not believe their stories, but that woman is also dead. The detective who investigated this case 27 years ago is dead. So a lot of the people in this story we really can't go to for, for more information. What we do have, though, uh, here I have just part of it right here, uh, is hundreds of pages from the investigative file. Uh, and that formed the basis of our story um, because you have documents uh, showing this um, and, and giving really all, all of the information. Um, so uh, I want to look at some more of your questions before we leave here. Um, yes, 100 certainly way not enough, Connie, uh, it, especially if we, um, you know, referring to Daniel Huertas and where he is now, by his own account, his life is in shambles. Um, the other thing is um, you've got uh, the district attorney is, is long since gone, is no longer uh, there in that county. Um, what bill should we refer to, Darcy Cobb? House Bill 911 or 911. Um, it's just a coincidence that that's the number, but it is about uh, child uh, abuse, sexual abuse of foster children currently and this is really going to surprise everybody, but currently there is no law that prevents a foster parent from having a consensual sexual relationship with a foster child 16 or over. All of the laws that prevent sort of minor sex abuse apply under 16. 
but it's essentially, you know, DFACS would get involved and take the children away would be really the only answer. Um, but if it's 16 and over, it's not illegal uh, in Georgia for a um, for there to be a relationship between a foster parent and a um, and a foster child 16 and up. House Bill 911 would criminalize that. So tonight uh, at 11, uh, we're going to have this story on 11 Alive if you're in the Metro Atlanta viewing area. Right now, though, if you want to see the whole story and read more about it, see the documents, just go to the description that we have up. Uh, and it, there's a link in there where you can go to the story. The other thing is uh, here at 11 Alive in the reveal, we also have uh, a text number and an email. You can send tips to us. 404-873-9114. That's a text number, not, not a voice number. Don't call us uh, at that number. Text us. Um, and that way we'll have your contact info, 404-873-9114. Or you can always email us, the reveal at 11alive.com. Uh, we're the only weekly local investigative show in the country. We have four full-time investigative reporters, two full-time photographer editors. Uh, we have uh, also a full-time digital uh, producer we're really the only ones in the country doing this. It's called The Reveal, Sundays at 6. Uh, but again, tonight, on up late at 11, we'll uh, dig down deeper into this story. Let me just quickly look to see if there's any other questions. Thank you, Terry, for saying thanks for the story. Happy to hear it. Uh, where's her mugshot? Excellent question, Terry. The file's gone. Uh, the file absolutely vanished. Uh, the, and the, rate, the reason for this, according to the sheriff's office in Cherokee County, is that the case was simply so old, she had pleaded guilty, and because she pleaded guilty, after 20 years, they destroyed the file because there's no chance of an appeal ever happening. Um, although, you know, now uh, this uh, foster mom says, you know, she's talked with an attorney about maybe challenging her, her guilty plea. Uh, she was going to go on Montel Williams because she says a couple of the boys have recanted. Daniel Huertas, whose life is in shambles and whose daughter is now in uh, the custody of the same uh, Depar Department of Family and Children's Services in Cherokee County, uh, he is standing by a story uh, that is supported by the investigative case file. Uh, so for now, that's it. I'm Brendan Keefe at 11 Alive. Uh, I encourage you to send us uh, information when you want to uh, give us any kind of tips course, check out the web story right now on 11 Alive, and we'll see you at 11 on Up Late on 11 Alive. Uh, and for now, that's it here from the 11 Alive studios. I'm Brendan Keith.